After a month of public beta testing it in our secret labs, behold, Apple intelligence in the iPhone is alive! It's alive! <laughs> well, I mean, it's kind of sort of alive. I mean, it's an experience that's not quite whole yet. You see, a lot of the stuff is being held back for the public release. The developer tests, they include some of the flashiest things, but it's gonna be a while before the public gets that. You might call this a patchwork job when iOS 18.1 rolls out in the next few days. <sighs> It's a bit of a spooky time for Apple right now. The company is making a bold jump into weaving generative AI with Siri, but it's not a finished product. I mean, Apple even says it's not a finished product and there's gonna be criticism because of that. My own experience with the public beta has me questioning a few things. Like, is it really improving my life when it summarizes my quirky friend's text messages in this inhuman way? So as we all get one more software update to download, let us go over what to expect in Apple Intelligence. I'm Bridget Carey, and this is One More Thing. Back in June, Apple first announced all of the coolest things coming to Apple Intelligence. And you will be hearing about people testing some of those cool things on their iPhones. But the general public will not yet be getting all of those cool things right away. The hype has been building. iOS 18.1 lands just about any day now. And it comes with a couple of new features, including Apple Intelligence. But the only iPhones that can tap into AI are the iPhone 15 Pro models and the new iPhone 16s. Now, as for Mac computers, anything with Apple Silicon will get the Apple intelligence. And by that, I mean anything with the M series chips. Apple's AI also will land on the iPads with M chips, and it's gonna be in the brand new iPad mini since it has an A17 Pro chip, same as the iPhone 15 Pro. Apple intelligence is only in the US for now, and it's only in English, but more countries are expected to get access later in the year. When you come across things that use Apple intelligence, you're gonna notice a rainbow glow, like how Siri makes the whole phone border glow. Now I've been using it on this iPhone 16 Plus, this Franken phone of mine, in a beta version of the operating system. And the first public release has what are three big areas of change in how you're gonna interact with the iPhone. It's in writing, images, and how you talk to Siri. Let's say you're typing and you highlight your text. Well, Apple can make suggestions to improve the tone of the message you're writing. Now, I know how I want to convey my thoughts, so I have no need for this, but I guess you could use it if you wanna think twice about how you might be phrasing something sensitive. But I think these tools can also make you come off sounding stuffy sometimes. The AI can also be set up to summarize emails and notifications. I turned on everything just to be exposed to all the summaries, and it can get a little weird knowing that a computer is stripping out the person personality of your friend's messages and delivering it to you in this administrative robotic way. Here's an example of a group chat where we shared a photo of my son having fun working with dad on the car and it became photos shared of child reaching into car hood. Okay. Or there was a slack when an editor tells me he got the draft of a video down to 17 minutes, but he needs some input. Assembly timeline reduced to 17 minutes request to cut critical parts. This happens when there are long messages or several messages from one source, such as a Slack or iMessage. It is condensing all the information and you can quickly expand it, but it also could give you some dystopian vibes if you choose to turn that on, that is. You may have seen one summary that went viral earlier this month shared on X. It was a New York City software developer who got a summary of his ex-girlfriend breaking up with him. Now, nothing has been that bad from what I have tested, but it made me inspired to send a flurry of messages to my colleague, Lisa Edichico. And well, it did not include everything in my rambles to her. So just be prepared for someone to say that they missed some details of your message if you send something long. That means if you're in a relationship, tread carefully. The second big area change is gonna be with your photos. You can play around with searching for photos in different ways. Maybe you wanna be a little more conversational or descriptive in what you're looking for in a photo. One thing that's cool is that AI can make a memory movie for you now by just taking your requests. And it might not get everything perfect, but it is pretty impressive when I wanted to dig into the past. I would ask for a movie of my kids crawling and it even pulled up different images 
when I asked for a video of kids learning how to walk. You see, it knew the difference. Now, of course, there are gonna be limitations. When I asked for photos of my kids at Legoland, it didn't know what Legoland was, but it did understand when I wanted to show images of my kids playing with Lego bricks. And you might also get a kick out of cleaning up photos. Now, I took this cool picture of my son dressed as Link, and I wanted to erase that person in the background. And I could just take my finger, circle the area I want gone, and it will generate more of that general tree and grass imagery as filler in the place of where the person was. You may also find yourself learning to communicate differently with your Siri requests. Maybe you'll have some better luck with smoother follow-up questions, or you'll notice that if you stammer into a question, Siri is okay with it, it still understands you. You can also type to Siri easily by double tapping the bottom of your phone to get a text prompt, so you can just type in your question. Just be prepared to know that Siri might not do everything you just expect it to know how to do. Now, mine is still in beta, kinks are to be expected, but I got a little bold and I asked it to show photos of Bridget and I would get Bing search results on Bridgerton. So yeah, there's that whole work in progress thing we talked about. Apple's big pitch here is that the new assistant is more personal. It can stitch together facts from your calendar, email, and messages to give you these tailored answers. But that's not now. In an interview with the Wall Street Journal, Apple Vice President Craig Federici said Siri's improvements are coming in stages over the coming year. This is a big lift, and we feel like we want to get it right. Uh, you know, you could put something out there and have it be sort of a mess, or uh, you know, Apple's point of view is more like, let's try to get each piece right and release it when it's ready. Perhaps the biggest question right now is, what about Genmoji? When can you make your own emoji? Well, the first iOS 18.2 developer beta dropped this week. So you might see examples of it in social media, or maybe you have a tech savvy friend sending you some very unique emoji, but it is developer beta. It is not for everyone. And there's other things in the developer beta. It also has chat GPT integration for questions that may require knowledge from the broader World Wide Web. Also, this developer beta has visual intelligence. That's Apple's version of Google Lens. Consider this a to be continued moment and please subscribe because we're going to keep poking at this. If you've been testing the betas, chime in in the comments about your thoughts so far and we'll just have to see what monster Apple created here when Apple intelligence begins to roam the land. And also thanks to my daughter who doesn't know I totally rummaged through her arts and crafts supply box this morning to make this monster. I don't know. I think he's kind of cute. <laughs>